What's up YouTube? I'm here at the Maryland Frederick Reptile Expo, the Maryland Farm Reptile Expo in Frederick. So let's go inside and see some awesome animals. Check it out. This is my new pal here. This is a blood red opal. This is a blood red opal corn snake, lavender albino, T negative albino, sun kissed, and blood red. Blood red. Quadruple recessive, you guys know I'm not usually a fan of triple recessive, or even quadruple recessives for that matter, but I still think this is a beautiful snake. Look at her eyes. Look at how gorgeous she is. You guys know what I love corn snakes. This is the best pet snake if you guys are beginners, especially if you live here in the U.S. because they're right in their habitat. These guys are found in Florida, New Jersey. Just look at, her, look at the colors on her. She's just absolutely gorgeous. I love corn snakes. Let's look what else we can see here. This is a. This happens to be a super pastel, yellow belly, scaleless. If you guys can look at the scales here. Come on, show your scales. Show your head. It's got a little bit of head scales. Missing the head scales. This is, he's like, ah, I don't want to do this right now. I'm head camera shy. But you guys know, you guys remember when I did earlier this year when I did that video tribute to Brian Barczyk, the guy who produced the scaleless stuff. I haven't spoken about him in a while, but you know how much I love scaleless snakes. You guys know how much I love the like, scaleless snakes. Get so much hate for no reason. You know. They're such great snakes. You know, they, they feel like human skin, but it's 100% scaleless. I'm so hoping to see 100% scaleless soon. But <clears throat> this is one of my favorite snakes I've seen so far. You guys know how much I love Super Pastel. Look at how, how much really it enhances the gene here. This is one of the coolest snakes I've seen so far. Well, at least when it comes to scaleless, he's like, hey, I'm going to tag you right now. <laughs> Look at him, he's like, hey, what's going on? I'm going to tag you. But you guys know this is a cool snake. Let's see what else we can see here. Have a look at this cheeky monkey. He's like, yeah, he's a, you can tell this one's about to snap. This happens yeah, no, to be no, no, a... No, she's defensive. She's, yeah. She is. She's very defensive. No, Usually, I'm... This happens to be a purple passion pinstripe, which is, ant, which is a pinstripe phantom Mojave. Mojave and phantom... Yeah, mixed together really well. It's one of my favorite allelic snakes, the purple passion. Just, just hear the name purple passion. That is so cool. Look how defensive this guy is. He's a, I can tell this guy's about to pop. But you have the pinstripe to the snake. It's kind of a cool snake. Now another combo you get is what's called a deep purple passion. when you add pastel to purple passion. But it was even cooler than this one. But this one's so beautiful in its own right. I just love seeing purple passions here. Cool to see the snake here at the expo. I think it's getting him away before he takes a pop at my camera. Hey guys, I'm here at my good friend Mark Goodwin's table. GeckoRacks.com. You guys gotta check him out. These guys are specializing in lychees. Let's have a look at the size of this chunky monkey. This happens to be the Lychianus gecko, which is the largest gecko species in the world. This guy's like about as big as they get. He's like, uh, I don't think I've ever seen him get bigger than the world's smallest, smallest monitor, which is pretty creative. Which is pretty crazy, sorry. Have a look at we've got gargle geckos, we've got crested geckos. <clears throat> this is, these two are great pets for beginners. Have a look at him, he's like, oh, I'm inquisitive. Like, hey, what's that? He's like, hey, what's going on right now? But just look at how cute he is. Just look at that tongue, it's just so adorable. Again, geckorex.com. Check him out. Meet my new buddy. His name is Bud. <laughs> look at him, he's like, ah, I'm just gonna chill out here. He's like, oh, I love the attention. He's like, this is the bulldog of the, front of the lizard world now. Believe it or not, Bud has a very sad story. Because he was a rescue. When people buy tegus, you should not feed your animals french fries. He ate french fries for most of his life, which is not good. So, don't buy an animal if you don't know what you're doing, okay? Look at him. He's like, this is really an advanced, it's more of an advanced lizard, I'd say. But you guys are so cool. Just look at him. He's, he's enjoying the attention right now. So, again guys, you guys have got to support USR Florida too, because these guys are outlawed, outlawed in Florida. So, outlawed in Alabama, I think, and Arkansas. So we got to do a better job of educating these politicians. These animals are not harming the ecosystem. They're not harming us unless they can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. But that's what U.S. Arc is there for—to make sure you know what you're doing. But look at him. Yeah, look at that tongue. That long tongue. So cool. Hey, buddy. Look away, keepers in South Africa. This happens to be an Inca boa. This is a co-dominant trait. These guys are really cool. I've looked at the pattern on the snake. The reason I'm saying is because I know you guys in South Africa are not allowed to import boa constrictors anymore, which is really unfortunate. Because I one of my first snakes I ever owned was a boa constrictor. I love the Inca gene. This is a gene I've never seen before, but look at the red and the colors and just... You add sun glow to the snake, the snake is going to look incredible. You guys know how much I love boa constrictors. I hope to get one soon. Just look at how beautiful that head is. You guys know one of my favorite boa morphs is the IMG. This happens to be a super motley IMG. Oh, but it says super, oh, super, sorry, super hypo IMG. Sorry, what did I say motley? I said motley. But I guys know how much I love hypo boas and I love IMG. So the I IMG boa stands for increased, increased melanin gene. So it starts off almost normal, 
but as it gets older, it turns jet black. And if you look under a, the light, you can see some iridescence on the scales, which is really cool. Now, this happens to be the super hypo, which in most, most reptiles, hypomelanism is usually recessive, but with bow constrictors and Burmese pythons, it's co dominant. Just have a look at the snake here. This is, one, this is just one incredible snake. I love boa constrictors. Check out these guys. Check the cards out there, guys. Yeah, it's a little this is Mr. Carrier. Uh, this happens to be a veiled chameleon? Just a panther. A panther chameleon? Sorry, panther. Why did I say veiled? You guys know how much I'm, I'm not playing with that. A panther chameleon. These guys are native to the island of Madagascar. This is one of the <clears throat> one of the most popular pet chameleons, guys. But you guys, before you buy a chameleon, you guys have to do a lot and a lot of research. For, for starters, it's imperative that you have a screen cage like this because they need open air a lot. These guys, well, you don't need necessarily to have a water bowl, but a lot of spraying, so sometimes you'd have a misting system. But <clears throat> one of the things I always talk about, these guys are really not the best handling animals. They don't like being handled a lot, but they're really good display animals. If you guys have, like, when I have these on display in your living room, they'll make it really cool. Just talk it, like a display, uh, a display talk. You guys can talk about it in your living room. It's not a, well, these guys aren't the best handling animals, so if you guys are teachers, and you guys want to have a classroom pet, a chameleon may not be for you, but a really cool animal. Just look at the colors on this monkey. Show you a whole lot more things. Have a look at this monkey. This happens to be an albino pied ball ball python. You guys know how much I love the pied ball ball python. There might be, believe it or not, I think there might be a population of pied ball ball pythons in Benin, which I think is really cool. You guys know how much I love pied ball ball pythons. I love pied ball Burmese pythons. I love pied ball reticulated pythons. When they, when they find a pied ball African rock python, I'm sure they will find one soon. But you guys know. This is a double recessive. Peter Call produced the very first pie ball ball pythons back in the 90s. And believe it or not, they used to sell for $25,000 back in the day. Now this is when you add the albino, this is a T-negative albino that Bob Clark, I think Bob Clark is pretty much the father of anything albino pythons. Maybe the albino blood, the albino berm, the albino retics. But albino pie together is one amazing snake. Look at how beautiful it is. Meet my new little buddy. Oh, you're sketchy. Have a look, he's in the middle of the shed and you know, Snakes on the most part, when they turn blue, like a lot of times they would end up being a little bit nippy. Yeah. So, so this one's a little bit of a sketchy snake. But this isn't a Pearl Island boa. These guys are from the island off the coast of Honduras. These guys, this is about as big as they get. This is an adult Pearl Island boa. Can you calm down? Yeah, see? So this is an adult Pearl Island boa. So again, you guys are looking for a boa constrictor, but you don't have the space. A Pearl Island could be for you. Just look at how cool that snake is. It's like, eh, I'm gonna get out of here. Have a look at this monkey. This happens to be a pied ball ball python. You guys know how much I love pied ball ball pythons. I just showed up an albino. This is a regular pied. They can actually vary from time to time. Believe it or not, you can get high whites, low whites, medium whites. Sometimes they would be all white like a spied, but this happens to be, this is one of the snakes that, that blew up on the internet a few years ago. This is a smiley face. You can see he's got a smiley face here. Brian's got one. Uh, Brian did have one, I, I don't know. But you guys know how much I love pie ball ball pythons. It's cool to see the snake right here in Maryland. Look at how cute this little monkey is. This happens to be a Salcata tortoise, which is what the third largest tortoise species in the world. This is, these guys are hatched. These guys hatched May 4th this year. Look at how cute they are. But the truth is, this cute animal is not going to last for very long because these guys do get huge. So, like Salcata tortoise may not be the best for someone who lives in an apartment or somebody who lives in the north because these guys, as uh, Jason Miller would say, these guys are the cows of the reptile world. These guys love to eat grass, so these guys oftentimes would get, need a large enclosure. So if you guys live in the south, like Florida, this could be for you. Or if you just have a lot of space for the winter time, this could be. But <clears throat> the truth is, Salcata's tortoise, although this guy is so cute right now, he is gonna get huge. You guys have gotta have a lot of space. But you know what, I always just get, my heart always melts when I see a newborn tortoise. Just look at how cute this little monkey is. Meet my new buddy here. This happens to be a super enchi yellow belly asphalt. You guys know how much I love enchi stuff. Did I say I like enchi? I really like enchi. Sweet Ball in Sweden produced the very first enchi ball pythons. The yellow belly was produced by Amir, I can never pronounce his last name in Florida. And I don't know who produced the gavel, <coughs> the asphalt, sorry. But freeway is an allelic trait, so when you breed it to a normal, you're gonna get 50% Asphalt and 50% yellow bellies. It's kind of like acts like a super as I say here, but this is a, a really cool snake Just have a look at the pattern on the snake. If you guys are walking in the bush you might, and you saw a snake like this You might think it's venomous, but look at how beautiful the snake is. I love freeway ball pythons. I love anything that's allelic I, just love, well, I love any ball python in general, but I also love, you know, believe it or not, there's an city in Ghana. I think it's in Ghana. It's called Enchi, but maybe that's where the name came from, but and this regular enchi, if you add pastel to the snake, the snake is gonna be even 
brighter. Have a look at this. This happens to be an Apalachicola king snake, which is a, a this species is native to the Apalachicola forest in in uh, Florida, which is one of the this is one of the most beautiful king snakes I've ever seen. Believe it or not, this is how they start. But as they get older, they almost turn a little bit black. But you guys know how much I love king snakes, and I remember that episode. Uh, I learned about the snake uh, through the episode The Snake Wranglers back in the day. Dr. Bruce Means was the guy who discovered the snake in the wild. And I remember them looking for it. But I think this snake is so beautiful. Have a look at the bands there. It kind of reminds me of a, a banded snouted cobra almost. But this is a beautiful snake nonetheless. Here we've got a lesser pastel leopard clown. The leopard gene is linked to the piebald gene. Peter Call of Peter Call Reptiles here in Maryland was the guy who proved out the leopard gene. The clown is a recessive trait. And this also has Lesser, which Rolf Davis proved out, proved out here in Maryland as well, which is linked to the blue-eyed leucistic. And then we've also got the Pastel, which Greg Graziani from the hit, series here, ah, hit TV series Python Hunters produced. Uh, the Pastel and Lesser are a real enhancing snake. Look at the colors. You guys can see a little bit of blue here, a little bit of white. And of course, we've got the clown pattern in the background. <laughs> he's, look at him. He's like, eh, what's that camera? I'm going to go strike at it. Well, he's lucky he's on a striking pose, but you guys know how much I love clown ball pythons. You guys are looking at a... This is Serpentine's Exotics. Guys, go check them out. This is one of the coolest ball pythons I've ever seen so far. Beautiful snake. Delicious. This happens to be a Paradox IMG boa. You guys know how much I love boa constrictors. This happens to be a Paradox. Unfortunately, the Paradoxing is not genetic, so it's got IMG, which is the inc increased melanin gene, which is almost a jet black snake. It's also got the T positive, which is the VPI. But this is one of the most beautiful boas I've ever seen. Growing, I know, for all you guys in South Africa, you guys are going to be jealous about this because I don't know if you guys have these in South Africa yet because you guys can't get these. But look at how beautiful the snake is. Unfortunately, the paradoxing, like I said, is not genetic. But this is a cool snake nonetheless. I just had to show it to you guys. These are both Paraglow IMGs as the paradox, like I said. Now, this is the Paraglow IMG. So, Paraglow is a sharp albino. T positive albino, which is so cool, but this is the paradox, and like I said, it's not genetic, unfortunately. But this is a cool snake. This is the Paraglo IMG, like I said, the inc increased melanin gene. You guys know how much I love boas. So, but if you guys are from South Africa, look away because I don't think you're going to be getting these time any getting these anytime soon. But look at how beautiful they are. All right, guys, that's it. We wrap up. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. God bless.